Good morning, Vinyl Community. It's Philip Destination Vinyl. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for tuning in and giving me a little bit of your time. This video is going to be a contest entry for Ron Haggerty's uh, channel, Vinyl Pasta. And the contest is uh, my favorite year in music. That was really hard to pick one because there's just so many great years. Uh, but I picked 1975, the year I first started collecting music when I was uh, 12 years old and bought my uh, first Beatles album and uh, obviously since then I've got a lot more albums in my collection uh, from that year so I'm going to start and he has six questions the first one is uh, most under overrated album pardon me most overrated album from that year most underrated album from that year number three is a comeback album from that year four is my favorite debut uh, fifth is an album from that year that I wish I had that I can't find and then number six to show my five, five favorite albums from that year. And I found this actually pretty easy once I started going through the uh, charts and seeing what came out in that year. So my most overrated album from that year, I'm not going to earn any friends here. Um, I don't even have it. I used to have it. I traded it in. I just couldn't stand it. It was uh, Bruce Springsteen and Born to Run. And I just, sorry, I, I like Springsteen. I've got... Uh, I've got uh, Darkness on the Edge of Town up there to be played next on my list. But I just can't stand Born to Run. That song is just drives, drives me insane. It just goes on and on. I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Sorry, I made a net few enemies here more than likely, but that's my opinion. You know, music is uh, very subjective. We all hear things differently. We all have different tastes. Again, I like Springsteen. I just can't stand Born to Run. To me, that album is just way blown out of proportion. Um, number two, most underrated album of that year, would be uh, Homegrown One uh, BTO Four Wheel Drive. Fantastic album, it's the back cover. Really hard rocking album. Beautiful gatefold. But for whatever reason, um, this album doesn't seem to get mentioned a lot. Um, I don't know why. Uh, it's a fantastic hard rocking album. Uh, yeah, it's got the hit Hey You, Four Wheel Drive, She's a Devil is on it, Flatbrook Love is a Hard Song, Quick Change Artist. It's just a fantastic album, every track I, you know, but that to me is my most underrated album of that uh, year. Number three, a comeback album. This is a uh, British band that uh, went through various lineup changes, and uh, in 1974, after their last album, three guitarists left. Or three members left anyway, or were dismissed, whichever way you want to put it. And they joined up with a couple they uh, they heard in a recording studio when they were testing out uh, some new equipment. And they joined the band, and just had a, been massive ever since, and that's Fleetwood Mac. And to me, this would be a comeback album, because it's a new lineup with Buckingham and Nicks. And, you know, the mega sales just went on from there and there, and it's just a great album. Again, this absolutely perfect album. Absolutely perfect. There's not not a not a bad track on this album. And it doesn't want to go back and see. There we go. Not a bad track on this album. Back cover. I'm sure most people have this one in collection, but uh, just just a fantastic comeback from the uh, previous one, which I can't remember what it was called. There was mystery to me, and then there was one after after that, and after that they had Buckingham next join, and it was uh, uphill from there. Uh, my favorite debut album from that year, Ron, you show, or uh, someone I saw show this recently, but uh, probably not well known down in the States, but this is a local band from Vancouver, Trooper, and this is their uh, debut, and uh, this had the hits General Hand Grenade and Baby Won't You Please Come Home, but the whole album is just a real, real hard rocker. They used to be a really hard rocking bar band, and then they started cranking out hits after hits after hits, at least in Canada anyway. They're a huge, they're a huge band in Canada. If you don't know Trooper, I suggest you really try this album. It's just a great, classic Canadian hard rock band. Uh, number five, an album I wish I had in my collection. Boy, I've been searching for this one for years. And that's uh, Blackfoot, No Reservations. I love Blackfoot, good southern hard rock. But man, their albums are hard to find. I have three, I think, in my collection, four maybe. But man, their, their albums are so hard to find. When, when they hit the stores, they're gone. That's it, right away. Um, number six, yeah, number six, five favorite albums from that year, and this is in no particular order, 
I think I have this just in alphabetical. Uh, yeah, I just got this in alphabetical order. I'll do this because I, I I can't pick a favorite out of this. And my first uh, one is uh, Aerosmith, Toys in the Attic. Just a classic by them. And it says uh, Walk This Way, big 10-inch record, uh, Speed of Motion on it. Just not a bad track on the album. Just a fantastic effort from those guys. Uh, and an absolute monster. Uh, well, there's a, there's a couple of big monsters in here. Um, Zeppelin, Physical Graffiti. Who doesn't have this in their collection? If you're a Zeppelin fan, you've got this. Just the ultimate double album, in my opinion. Just fantastic. Not a weak track on here. Just an awesome, awesome output of songs by this band. Just so many different uh, styles of music on that. And not a, not a clinker in the bunch. Uh, Scottish band. Um, Nazareth. Hair of the Dog. Another classic. And uh, this one obviously had uh, Hair of the Dog as the title track. And... Uh, Whiskey Drinking Man is on here, and uh, Change in Times, so this, this Misery, this is just a great album all the way through. Uh, number four, and again, these are not in order, I'd be hard-pressed to pick an order of these. Uh, Mighty Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here, on the back cover. Just, again, just a classic, classic album. And one we all know and love more than likely, um... My cover is showing a lot of uh, a lot of wear, and I don't know what this is. It's not mold, but it's uh, Queen, a day at the or night of the opera. Pardon me. And it's got all this modeling on it. I don't know. It's just started the last couple of years. It's never been exposed to moisture. It's never been uh, never had a rough day in its life. But the cover is just not wearing well. I don't get what this is. Maybe it's dampness in the air. We do have a lot of humidity and rain in our area. But uh, yeah, Queen Night at the Opera, that's my, uh, that's my fifth. In a gatefold. Obviously this has Bohemian Rhapsody on it, but it's also got a very underrated, in my opinion, song. And my second favorite Queen song of all time is 39. And I just love that song. It's such a change of pace from the others on this album. And it's, yeah, there you go. A classic. So there you go, Ron. That's my entries. Uh, overrated, underrated, comeback, debut, wish I had, and five favorites. I think I hit them all. Hope you enjoyed this, um, and uh, I look forward to watching other entries in your contest. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.